Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thanks for watching today. I wanted to do a video where I swatch a whole bunch of Burt's Bees products for you. Um, first of all, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And the reason that I have this many, look at this, is that I have like the best husband ever. My husband knows what I love. He knows that lipstick is probably my most loved makeup product because I could be completely bare faced, no concealer, no brows, no mascara, no nothing, but I will have lipstick or lip gloss or something on my lips. Even if it's just lip balm, there will be something on my lips always. I could be, this literally happened. You know, brain surgery, two brain surgeries in the same week in a hospital bed in the neuro ICU and I had something on my lips. That's who I am, he knows that about me. So he found these and he knew that I had not tried them. And he's like, you know, I'm gonna take those. They were, they were like ridiculously on sale, but he brought home one of everything that there was in the store. So there are some of the Burt's Bees lip oils. There are some of their, what are these called? Their lip crayons. And then there are some of their lipsticks. So I thought we'd just try them all on. I've used Burt's Bees for decades. I've loved them. I think the first time I found out about Burt's Bees, I was 16, 17. Oh, it was a long time ago, like almost two decades ago. And it was those little teeny tiny round tins, not the really tiny ones, but like they were slightly bigger and you had to pull the lid off. And I remember it was just the right size where I could just hold it and make my lips pucker up and just kind of twist it and it would perfectly coat my lips. Um, it's silly, but that's the first memory I have of Burt's Bees. I bought that first tin for 25 cents at some local boutique and I fell in love with it and I always had a tin of Burt's Bees after that. And then when they moved it into these more traditional chapstick twist up style, I loved that too. But I have had a long standing love affair with Burt's Bees, especially their lip products. And I thought it'd be fun to swatch these for you today. This is the shade Caramel Cloud. What I like the most about this is I feel like it's the perfect no lipstick, and it's not lipstick, but you know, no lip product on your lips, but still glossy, hydrating. And unlike some glosses that have those, you know, if it's really a stringy and thick formula, you get those little strings that attach right in the back. I never have that problem with this. And this shade here is like a really beautiful glossy nude where it just doesn't even look like I'm wearing much other than a clear gloss, but it's beautiful and I love it. This kind of light pink shade is called Showering Sunset. I feel like it has that same look that the Caramel Cloud does where it, it looks kind of like my natural lips, but glossy. Super comfortable. I've worn these before. I feel like every hour or so I need to put another couple clicks on to keep it hydrated and glossy looking, but the hydration doesn't go away even when the shine and the gloss goes down. They last for, a, the, the nourishment on my lips lasts for the long, longer amount of time, but I do like the glossy look, so that's like every hour I'm putting it on. But I find I don't need a mirror to put these on. I can be in the car and twist it up and just so if you're looking for one of these that has a little bit more tint to it, this one here is Crimson Breeze, and this is probably the one that I've been using the most. Now, if you don't already know this about me, red lipstick is my absolutely favorite lipstick in the world. And the fact that this is more of that red tone, but very um, natural, it, it almost feels like my favorite sheer red lipstick, which is Lipstick Queen's Medieval, kind of like a cherub lip where they look juicy, they look slightly tinted, but not that bright red. And if you like the idea of wearing something with a little bit more tint to it, you would really like this. I'm wearing the Burt's Bees Lip Crayon in Sedona Sands. This formula, it's still emollient. It's obviously thicker, and it does feel like it has some butters or waxes in it you know, probably beeswax, hence the Burt's Bees, but it's very, very comfortable. And this shade here is a very neutral tone. It doesn't end up making me look like, I mean, it has just, it doesn't really have a gloss to it. It more looks like it's just nourishing and not dry on my lips. So maybe more like of a satin look on the lips, very comfortable. And this color in Sedona Sands is beautiful. This is Carolina Coast. When I look at this, 
I feel like it might look better if I was wearing more cool tones all over my face, but since I have a warm blush and a warm eye going on, you really see that this is more of that white-based, cool-toned pink. Now, not that there's anything wrong with that, but this is not the shade that I would immediately reach for. And I, I think it's really pretty. I'm just gonna put a little bit of it on the back of my hand. It tends to look almost like even just a hint lavender, like leaning lavender. If you tend to like more of these really pale, almost milky color pinks, you might really like this. This is Niagara Overlook. I love this shade. I hadn't tried this one on, but I feel like this is one of those where it's great for summer. It's got a little bit like a, a hint of coral. It's not too nudie peach. It's not too orangey coral. It's just kind of right in the middle and would make a really beautiful color on your lips. I'm I'm in love with this. I feel like it also goes really well with the rest of the warm I have going on in my face and my cheeks and my eyes. But this is right kind of walking that line of coral and a little bit pink. This would be my ideal kind of mid-toned shade. This is Hawaiian Smolder. I think that this shade here is a really beautiful, easy to wear pink. There are a lot of times that I kind of stay away from pinks because like a nude that leans a pink is one thing or a bright hot fuchsia, like almost like almost like a rose color, but a little bit of hot fuchsia pink to it. This is usually not the territory that I like to be in, but I feel like this is a very universal pink. I feel like this would look really great on a lot of people. This is the shade Napa Vineyard. It's definitely a more deep and dramatic shade. I had not tried on these deeper shades in these kind of more crayon applications. What's interesting about this is that it's so much more concentrated and pigmented than I was expecting it to be. It's very comfortable, but I feel like when you're wearing something that's this deep, this would definitely benefit from having a lip liner. I feel like because it does have more of that pencil tip to it, it's gonna get blunted and then I'm not gonna get this nice, perfect application. But I feel like if I continue to want to wear this shade, I'm definitely gonna to wanna to reach for a lip liner to make sure things stay where they're meant to be. The last one of these that I have is called Redwood Forest. I had them lined up in front of me on my table from what I thought was lightest to darkest. And apparently the Napa Vineyard that I had on before this <laughs> was definitely darker. This is a really beautiful, easy to wear mauve tone. And I feel like this is almost that ubiquitous color that a lot of liquid lipsticks want to be, a lot of um, regular lipsticks that really easy to wear, a lot of, will suit a lot of skin tones, that really gorgeous mauve tone. And this is kind of like, even though it is more opaque, I feel like this is one of those you could probably wear without a lip liner. This one I think is gorgeous, super easy to wear, and I think might be one of the ones I get the most use out of. This is the shade Nile Nude. I like this shade a lot. I think it's a really beautiful, very wearable nude shade. It's a little nude for me. I probably would never wear it by itself, but this is one that I would use to mix in to maybe lighten the center of a lip. Oh, I love this one. This is Suede Splash. Oh, it feels so good on the lips. It's also just a little bit um, darker. It has more of a caramel tone to it. Super creamy, super comfortable on the lips. I think this is a beautiful shade. I really love the way these feel on the lips, especially when I press my lips together. So comfortable. This one is Tulip Tied. It has more of that cool, almost white-based, you know, pink, almost even slightly lavender shade to the lips. I feel like this shade here in Iced Iris is a very easy to wear light pink. Every time I put one of these on, they feel so silky and so buttery and so ridiculously comfortable on the lips. Like, ah, I love it. I feel though that this one is not quite as cool as the one before. I feel like a lot of people could probably pull this off and with a more neutral or maybe not quite so warm rest of my face with the cheeks and the eyes, this would definitely be a gorgeous, gorgeous lip. This is Sunset Cruise. I really like how this is definitely more like a like a corally 
you know, peachy color. It's light, it's beautiful. Again, the formula, I've been feeling the same feeling on my lips with every single one of these so far. I feel like so far the formulation is very consistent shade to shade. This could very easily be a My Lips But Better shade. This shade is Fuchsia Flood. It's, oh, so creamy. I, I can't believe how creamy these are. They feel so good on the lips. This is definitely more of that blue toned pink. It's not quite, for me, I wouldn't quite call this a fuchsia. I would definitely call it, um, I feel like it's a little closer to like a Barbie pink. Not in a bubblegum way, but not quite fuchsia either. This might be my new favorite shade. This is Lily Lake. Ugh. I feel like it has just enough color that on a light to no makeup day, it would really make my lips kind of the focal point but also not so much that it would look out of place, but also would work well with minimal or even a full-on look. I love this shade. Oddly enough, one of my daughters is named Lily. This is Ruby Ripple. I feel like they're all good. This really reminds me of Lipstick Queen's Medieval. It's a beautiful shade. I could see this one living in my purse. This is Russet River. I think this is a really gorgeous shade. What's interesting with this is that's kind of two swipes. There's one swipe. And you can really build it up to be quite a bit deeper. And I've got multiple swipes going on my lips here. I'd be really interested to see what it looks like with just one easy swipe on the top and on the bottom. I never apply any sort of lip product that way. I'm always more, 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 more. But this is gorgeous. It's a much deeper look, more of that um, bricky, almost brownie red, but it's a beautiful shade. Another beautiful red shade. This is Scarlet Soaked. So comfortable. They're all ridiculously comfortable. I feel like this is nice. It kind of, it doesn't, maybe doesn't look like it in the camera here, but it does really walk the line of being red without being completely opaque. It is still more on the sheer side. So if you're still trying to kind of dabble your foot into the red lipstick area, one of these more sheer Burt's Bees reds might be the great place to start because it gets you into feeling like, okay, I can wear this before you go for a full on, like a Ruby Woo from MAC or um, one of the velvet lipsticks from Lisa Eldridge, those really bright, punchy, opaque matte reds. This is Magenta Rush. If I'm gonna be wearing a bright kind of hot pink, this is the shade I'm going to go for. I think this is really fun, it's really punchy, it's a beautiful summer shade. I think it would work all year round if you tend to like more of these bright pinks. I think this is a great one. This is Brimming Berry. I love this shade. Okay, I have always loved berry lipsticks, but the feel of this on my lip, I also feel like this might be one, it might look good with a lip liner, but I feel like you could definitely wear this color without fear of it kind of traveling everywhere. I love this one. And I don't feel like it's opaque enough that if you don't perfectly line your lips, it's really obvious. I feel like it's soft enough and as it kind of wears, it would wear down beautifully. This last shade that I have here is called Juniper Water. It's definitely more of a purple leaning berry, but still really beautiful. I think that this formula is one of those where it's creamy, it's not 100% opaque, you could definitely build it up, but it's never going to be to the point where it completely blocks out your natural lip color. So if you're not one for opaque, opaque lipsticks, you're gonna love these on your lips. Now, if you only want to wear a lipstick that completely blanks out your natural lip color, these aren't gonna give it to you. But I think that we're kind of moving into an era now where we're getting away from 100% um, matte lips. Or for wearing matte lips, they're definitely more comfortable. They're not as drying. And that's kind of where people are really wanting to see products hit. I see more glosses coming out. I see more glossy stains. I see more lip products overall that are hydrating. And even the matte lipsticks have that claim of being hydrating, comfortable, and non-drying. Now that's always been my lip preference, the non-drying lip, and I feel like every single one of these Burt's Bees lipsticks really does hit that mark. I think I'm gonna 
take this off and put on my favorite lip product. I put on a combination. I never wear just one lip product. Well, I very rarely wear just one lip product. Most of the time I cocktail them up. So I put on my favorite of these lipsticks. This is in the shade Lily Lake. It's a gorgeous kind of mauve toned, almost my lips but better sort of lipstick. And then I threw on this lip oil in Crimson Breeze, just kind of right over the top to amp up that slightly more slippy and glowy, glossy look to the lip. I can't believe that I never tried these before. They are so good. I feel like if you're looking for more opaque color, you're going to get more overall coverage from these crayons. These are my three favorites. This one here is Sedona Sands. This is Niagara Overlook. This last one here is called Redwood Forest. They do tend to be more of the warm neutrals out of the bunch. I do think some of the pinks are pretty and that really dark, vibrant uh, Napa Vineyard is nice, but these right here are my three favorites. And I feel like if you're looking for something really that's gonna give you a little bit more color, you're gonna get it from this. There's not a single one of these that I could pick as a favorite from these lip oils. These are remarkable. I love them all. I feel like this one here is gonna give you a, if you tend to have not terribly pigmented lips, more of a, you know, my lips but better with a little bit of gloss, this crimson is going to give you a little bit more punch to your lips. I have this one over the top, but I really like this. What is this, Caramel Cloud? I, I don't know. I think these are remarkable. I also like the fact that you can advance the product click by click. It comes up through a brush. You can just paint it on. I really, really like these lip oils. And I feel like for the drugstore price, they're really great. There was probably only one shade in the lipsticks that I could probably see myself going, mm, I'm probably not gonna wear. But my four favorites, I couldn't really pick only three. I was trying to like, no, 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 no. I love these too much. These are my four favorites. This one right here is Suede Splash. This is Lily Lake. This one right here is Ruby Ripple, and this one is Juniper Water. So more of a berry tone, a full-on red, more of your mauve tone. And this one down here is kind of like um, a more caramely nude. I really feel like the formula of these is what I always hope to find in every single lipstick. It's not as pigmented as some other lipsticks. You can These are definitely buildable, because these are like four or five swipes here. But what I will tell you is they feel cushiony, they feel pillowy on the lips. They definitely have more of a, a beautiful slip, not a slick and greasy feel, but a beautiful slip on the lips to them. They just feel really gorgeous. And in every single one that I tried, I definitely felt like the formula was consistent one to the next, to the next, to the next. And they build nicely or one swipe will give you very minimal color. I have worn one of these for quite a while, and the one pet peeve that I have with these, uh, it drives me crazy, is that when you pull it out, this is as far down as it goes. And I have nicked putting this in here because the bullet doesn't go all the way down into that cylindrical tube. Sometimes pulling it off or putting it on, I'll catch and I'll nick the actual bullet itself. That's been the one problem I have, so I'm always trying to be very careful. I wish it would, you know, go down a little bit further. I feel like these lip products really have been a revelation to me. I wasn't expecting them to be this good. And I feel like it's terrible because I have this prejudice against drugstore makeup. I know that it doesn't deserve the prejudice that I get it, but sometimes I feel if I pay more, I get more, or the product's better. And that is definitely not the case, especially when it comes to these lip products. Like, I feel like all three of these different formulas, you could definitely sell these at a higher price point, and I feel like it would definitely be worth the value. I feel like maybe the packaging is a little lightweight and plasticky on these, but it, they are pretty, they are tall, they are slimmer than your average packaging. And then they do have this really interesting honeycomb detail here with the color behind it and this band here to show you what the actual color of the lipstick is, plus a sticker on the bottom with the name as well as the shade. I love that. 
but I feel like all of these, I know that this plastic packaging here, there's more elegant twist up brush applicators um, out there, but I feel like the delivery method is reliable. It works really well. The brush itself is nice and these are great. And I, for years, used to only buy Clinique Chubbies, like their chubby lip products. I feel like these are very similar in feeling to them, only these perform more like their chubby intense. And I know a lot of people have chubby lip products like this, but these are some of the ones that I enjoy the most. So I'm really delighted to have all of these. So impressed by these Burt's Bees lip products. So impressed. I don't know why I've been sleeping on these. If anything, I hope the takeaway from this video is, is that Burt's Bees lip products, just like their traditional balms are extremely hydrating, extremely comforting on the lips. Um, very much a, they're not gonna dry you out. They're gonna keep you looking gorgeous and your lips looking plump. And I really feel like all of these are remarkable. Let me know if you have a favorite product from Burt's Bees, uh, even if it's just one of their traditional lip balms, or if you've tried any of these lip products, let me know. If there's one that you think I might like that I don't have, let me know in the comments down below. Again, thank you so much to my husband for kind of enabling me and bringing home all of these lip products. And subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.